I am not speaking as a leading authority on this. I just had to put that caveat out. Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. As you can tell by the title of this video, these are some of the things that I'm noticing that are coming out uh, within a Robinson curriculum or a Thomas, Thomas, oh gosh, I'm gonna say Thomas Edison, Thomas Jefferson education. And why I think there are some things to be aware of when you're doing this, and the idea with the Charlotte Mason, I or the Charlotte Mason method in comparison to these things. Again, I am not a leading expert on this. I have watched um, the Robinson two-hour video and um, he has some great things in there that I, I really commend him for, especially as a dad. I know some people that are doing the Robinson curriculum and they're doing things beautifully, but I am also seeing that there is some things that I am concerned about with the Robinson curriculum. And this isn't to just say nobody should do Robinson curriculum. These are just some things that I'm noticing are happening and what I think that people should be aware of and um, combat it, it, so to speak. So first of all, I believe it is Trish from Just So Trish and personal friends of mine that do the Robinson curriculum. And Just So Trish is a great example of using that very well. Um, her kids are in 4-H. They are not just following the three R's, but um, are also going out and doing stuff. And my friend, again, her daughter loves books, so she put her on the Robinson curriculum. She is reading and writing and doing her math. And um, I'm going to actually be teaching her how to sew. Again, just it's it goes beyond that. But some of the things that I am seeing happening with the Robinson curriculum is that these children are only focusing on those three R's. They are only focusing on getting that math top notch, their writing top notch, and their reading just a huge amount of great literature. These aren't bad things necessarily, but I don't think it's a good complete picture. I'm watching these children do only those things and I am concerned only because where do they build on their skills? Um, there's a saying that goes, if you give me a book and I'll I'll build a, a cathedral. It's, it's something to that extent, um, basically. And great, um, my professor in um, English basically told the story of how he went out into the river one day and started rowing after the motor died and his wife was like, I didn't know you knew how to row boat, sail, whatever. He's like, I didn't. I just knew how to read and I figured it out. So, it, by the way, rowing isn't as easy as you think. But the thing that I'm going to use to illustrate is the past couple months for me. I have been reading a ton the past couple months. I have a stack the size of the Eiffel Tower that I really need to read and kind of move out of the house. I don't want to get rid of them because I do want to read them, but I really have no room for them at this current time. So I've been trying to, you know, just stuff my brain and read and go on to the next, not rush it so that I'm glazing over the words because then I really have to go back and reread it. So it's kind of pointless. But my focus has been homeschooling, housework, and getting these books out. And I noticed that um, when I started doing that, the things that I really enjoy, like walks with my children, gardening, uh, the hand skills that I have were just getting pushed to the back burner. And in a sense, the, per the who I was as a person kind of got shoved under the rug. Now I'm using that term very lightly because it it's still there and we are still human beings and just a change in method doesn't change anything. But I love books, okay? I'm, I'm just, I love books. But 
when I started to try to tame back, even though it's going to take me longer, tame back some of those or maybe say, hey, I can get this from a library. It's going to go and I'll pick it up, you know, write it down, go off the list, my library list. Then I was picking up my arts more and my children were seeing that and I've noticed that their um, <sighs> creativity is starting to flourish again. That is a problem I see with the Robinson curriculum, is that those three points are focused so much, the reading, the massive amounts of old literature reading is done, the writing, all of the writing that is done, and the arithmetic. And the Charlotte Mason education says give them a whole bunch of stuff so that a little bit of the child is put out in everywhere. I'm not saying a child won't have all these things if she only does, he or she only does a Robinson curriculum. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying I think you should be aware of these things and help cultivate some of that within your child. I think it's it's really important, even if the child doesn't sew, having some kind of creative outlet is superb. I can't tell you how many times I hear people say, well, I just don't have a creative bone in my body. And it's like, no, you just haven't found where yours lies. It could be in drawing. And I, I've seen that happen so many times when suddenly they realize, oh, I can draw. But it isn't until that switch is turned on that they realize they can, that they can take off. So, um, it, it, with anything, it's, it's all about moderation. Moderation in all things. So that's kind of why I really wanted to get on and share that with you. I'm not, again, I, I stress this highly. I am not saying don't do Robinson curriculum. I am not saying you should only do a Charlotte Mason. I am not saying Thomas Jefferson education is a bad idea. I'm not. There are some great literature in those books. Heck, I love half of those books on those lists. But um, just branch out a little bit. Using, just keeping your homeschool simple and so that you can learn these other things is a great idea. And there definitely is something to be said for less is more. So less work, more time to pursue those artistic things. And again, I would recommend you watching his curriculum video. Um, finding somebody that does it, does it, does the balance really well. Just research for yourself. Research why you're doing this. Anyway, at least focus on those two things. And if you think of a third, just go ahead and leave in the comments down below. All right, I just wanted to put this out there. I hope it was helpful for somebody, especially as you're researching all these curriculum ideas. And I will see you next time, and have a great day, and, um, yeah, I'm being redundant. Sail on, Mom. <laughs>